Hello and welcome to Monet Cafe. I'm artist Susan Jenkins. We're gonna have some fun today and if you're new here, please subscribe and hit that little bell icon to be notified of future videos. I'm happy to be bringing you this video, which is really kind of fun. We will actually be working from a black and white photo. Why would we do that? Because seeing value is actually more important than seeing color. Hello YouTube family, I'm Susan Jenkins and you're here in Monet Cafe and I'm bringing you a lesson today that is a, a segment of a Patreon lesson that I have. On Fridays we have something I call PE Day, Patron Education. We're doing something really fun. So today I thought I would just bring you the portion of that video where I'm doing a painting and also I am painting on a surface that I've never used before. I wanted to share that with you because I've shared often about my surfaces that I use and one of my favorites is UART paper and I typically use the UART 400 grit or grade paper and uh, I like to buy it in the pads sometimes I buy it in the sheets a little larger but these 9 by 12 pads with 10 sheets and it ends up being oh under three dollars a sheet okay to, to buy this in this size the challenge I've had is and I know a lot of you have is it curls and I used to say it's because I'm in a humid climate in the Tampa Florida area but I've had other artists say they're in dry climates and it curls and I always find myself fighting against it uh, as much as I love you art I love you your company <laughs> but um but anyway I had another member subscriber here in Monet Cafe I think that's where it was tell me that there is another surface like you are very similar that doesn't curl at all and it is, uh, here's the, I, I bought it in this pack of 10 sheets. It's Fisher 400 Art Paper. And I bought it uh, from a company, 400 is the same as you art, 400 grade or grit. I bought it from a company, Pro Art Panels. Now these are 12 by 16 sheets, 10 of them. And they're about $4 a sheet, that's approximate. So um, it's pretty comparable to UART except UART doesn't sell this size of a sheet um, as far as the price is what I mean. So I've never tried it, but look at, it's flat as a pancake. I've had this literally for a few months laying just in a portion where, a place in my studio where I keep papers and I've done nothing different to it than the UART, but it's just, it's not curling at all. Man, I'm so excited about that. I used to have tape around the edges to keep those curls. Uh, those edges from curling up. So, um, so I'm using this for the first time and I'm doing a painting from black and white. Uh, so I have a, a photo reference that's black and white. I'm coming up with a color palette. Like I said, it's part of the patron lesson, which is kind of neat. So uh, I have to keep my patrons, they, you know, they they pay a little extra to support this channel. And so I have to keep some things just special for them. So sorry guys, but you're getting the painting portion. So this should be fun, painting a marsh scene from black and white, coming up with the color palette out of my imagination. And oh, by the way, I have another announcement. I am creating a Monet Cafe YouTube channel album. It's a Google album for you guys. Because if you're just a Monet Cafe subscriber, if you're not on the Facebook group, Monet Cafe Art Group on Facebook, if you're not a patron of mine, um, whatever your reasoning is that you're not or can't be or whatever, I feel sometimes like it would be neat if you guys could see each other's work, if I could see your work. So I have really loved the Google albums I've been using on my Patreon group. So I thought I'd make a Monet Cafe album. I'll put the link. I'm going to announce it later, but I'll give you guys the link in every video where you can click that album, add your own paintings, and I'll probably encourage you to add a photo of yourself, maybe holding your painting, so that Monet Cafe on YouTube, we can kind of be a little community, more than just me up here yakking all the time. So I thought that would be neat. So that's coming soon too. So anyway, I'm going to get to painting. It should be fun. Thank you. Bless you. Subscribers are up. Um, I'm so happy about that. And I'm just thankful for all of you. All right, guys, this should be fun. Here we go. Uh, another quick comment before I start. I am wearing the Monet Cafe apron with the new logo design. And just so you know, I have the 
link to purchase. It's on a site called Zazzle. It's the only place I could find where you could get aprons made reasonably. And just so you know, I have since moved the logo up a little higher. I thought it was a little low, but it's a great apron. It also comes in a khaki color. I think I'm going to order that one too. I wish I could get it in black, but I can't. Um, it has an adjustable strap. It ties in the back. It's got these pockets and it washes great. It doesn't fade at all. So anyway, just thought I'd let you know that. Now, also, I am going to be doing my reference photo that is a black and white of a marsh. And I, because this paper is already 12 by 16, I didn't want to cut it too short with an eight by 10. Hey, Jackson. And uh, come here, Jackson. What do you think? You like that photo? Yeah? Okay. <laughs> so, since it's already a fairly large sheet, I thought, why not do an 11 by 14? I've been doing 8 by 10s a lot. So, like I do with my mats often, this mat, uh, I had another one that was 5 by 7 on the inside, 8 by 10 on the outside. This one's 8 by 10 on the inside, 11 by 14 on the outside. So, all you have to do, instead of measuring it out, and, um, you know, it just takes too long. So, why not just uh, use the mat to make it fast? All right, here we go. I am using a pastel pencil just for the sketch. And as a, I'll go ahead and give you my opinion of this paper. I absolutely loved it. It's literally just like you are at paper but it doesn't curl and it's close to the same price. So I am definitely uh, using this paper uh, pretty much in place of you art, I have to say, because the curling is crazy. I don't know if you guys experience that, but I do. And I am speeding up the video portion of this because the full portion is part of my Patreon page, but I still want to bring this video to you guys. So I am going to give some commentary while you watch me paint here. And I also want to share with you some of the strategies that I use when working from a black and white photo and what some of the advantages are in doing that. Why would I do that? And so I'll be talking about that in a minute. But first, let me tell you a little bit more about the pastels that I'm using here. Um, okay, so I am using my set that I've been using so much, the Unison 120 half stick set. I'm really loving this set. It just seems to have a little bit of everything in it. I don't have to um, go far in my studio. I can pretty much do a whole painting just from the set. So I shared with my patrons also that I'm going to try to contact Unison and let them know that, you know, since I'm sharing about their set so much, if we could get a coupon code or, you know, something, if maybe they could work out. So I'll let you guys know about that. But uh, you guys didn't get to hear because it's in the Patreon lesson, but I shared with them my concept and my direction from working with the black and white photo. And what I did was I chose a color palette. I chose one that was called a split complementary color palette. And I'm not going to go into all the details of that here. And as you see me working right here, I'm doing what's called a warm underpainting. I'm doing some, uh, I put some darks in for where the background trees were and where the kind of the bank side of those marsh grasses are. Then I get in some reds and oranges and lighter oranges, all decreasing in value or lightness and darkness as they recede into the distance. And if you haven't seen my video on uh, five ways to uh, create depth in your artwork. That's basically the principles I'm using here and pretty much what I use with a lot of paintings. That, that video's gotten a lot of views and I think it's because it's something that really does have a lot of information. It's very useful information. It's what I've learned over the years. I didn't reinvent the wheel in making that video. But um, so when working with a black and white photo, you are forced to focus on value. And you might think at first, well, gosh, what colors do I use? I mean, I'm, it's just like so open-ended. Well, first of all, we know that marshes usually are uh, have greens or oranges, depending on, you know, the seasons. And so you can kind of use that to your own discretion, but it's also forcing you to learn more about color theory. So when you learn a little bit more about how color works, also in that video I made, then you have a, a bit more freedom and more confidence in what colors you use. I had uh, originally begun this with what I said, a split complementary uh, with 
Uh, complementary colors are just colors that are opposite on the color wheel. So I had a lot of oranges, or I wanted orange, and opposite from orange on the color wheel is blue. A split comp complementary is where you take the orange, instead of going down to the blue, you go to the two colors right next to that, which were more of like purples and teals. And, um, and they, they just work well together. Something else I've also shared on my Patreon page, which is really awesome, is do you guys know what the color wheel is based on? I mean, how, how, does it, how did it come about? Uh, we know that uh, Sir Isaac Newton kind of invented the color wheel concept, but what was it based on? Why do these colors work? Why are complementary colors um, good to use together? And there's got to be a reason. Well, it's based on the rainbow. And that's just, to me, another sign that we have a great creator that even gives us the seven colors in the rainbow, lots of sevens in nature, and um, how awesome it is that there's order and design, and it's things that uh, resonate with our spirits, you know? Uh, you know, why do certain, certain colors work? Even non-artists kind of know when some art and colors are right. And so, uh, so anyway, that's kind of the strategy I used with my color palette, and uh, there's another... Uh, color, you can use a color wheel to do that, a pocket color wheel, but there's another neat thing. I don't think this is available in Europe for some reason, but it's a company uh, that has a website called Palaton.com, and it's a neat online way to play with different color palette strategies. You can choose an analogous color palette, which is um, colors, well, let me first start off. You can do a um, monochromatic color palette, I believe, which is just one color with different val values. You can do an analogous color palette, which is two colors uh, or colors that are kind of adjacent to each other. You can do a complementary. You can do all kinds of different um, ways that you can choose. And then you can choose the different color palettes that you like. So I'll include, um, I'll just put it in a little description here, palaton.com, if you want to play around with it. It takes a little while to figure it out, but once you do, it's super cool. Um, now, I'm doing something here I call, uh, well, I'm, now I'm off the sky already, a fractured sky, which is I'm not doing a lot of different value changes. I do have a little bit of light down around the tree line. Usually around the tree line, it's a little bit lighter. Now I just lightened up the values of those trees. They were a little bit too dark, but notice that I'm using the same purple. I always say if I've got a color in my hand, I might as well maximize my time and, and use it, but also it creates um, a harmony of the painting and a cohesiveness where your colors aren't just all in one place. They're a little bit throughout the painting. Not everywhere, but you know, in strategic places. And so um, so that's what I'm doing with that purple. So right now it really is that split complementary color palette that I uh, originally started with. Um, glazing over the water a little bit. Uh, but I do end up adding some greens before it's done. Um, now once again, back to the black and white. So if you work with a black and white photo, you can take any photo you have that you want to work with, convert it to black and white. The neat thing for my patrons was that for their PE lesson, their patron education on Fridays, I provided them with black and white photos, a whole lot of them, that they had never seen the color version. So their homework over the weekend is to literally uh, create from uh, black and white that they have no idea what the original color was, except for some things that are kind of, you know, obvious, like green grasses and stuff. So, but they don't have to be green. You can, you can do whatever you want, as long as you obey the rules of value. You can get creative with color. There's an expression that says, value is king, but color gets the glory. But, but really, it's value is what you should really focus and learn. And uh, then color will, you know, everybody talks about color theory, color theory. But if you get value right, you're, you're definitely ahead of the game for sure. All right, so now back to the fractured sky. A lot of the colors I'm using, especially in the upper sky, are all of similar value. So they're creating some interest with color, um, but they're not uh, going to be the star of the show. Because I wanted the water in the marsh to kind of lead the eye in. And if I had the sky with, and the reference photo doesn't have real detailed clouds, but if I had it with too much busyness, it would be competing with the focal point. I have another video on focal point. That's one of my favorite videos too. The focal point one and one called uh, the golden ratio, the grand design. Uh, I have one on light too. I, I really get into the science of these things. And it's like I say often in my Patreon page, I don't want to create copycat artists. I'm trying to give you guys art principle principles and um, lessons because we're all unique. 
uh, you don't need to be another Susan Jenkins artist, just like I don't need to be a, a you know, a Marlo Baguetta or Alan Picard. And uh, so we can have artists we admire and learn from and even copy at first. Yes, that's fine if you copy someone's art. That's what a lot of us are doing to learn. But eventually, you want to you wanna learn the reasoning behind it, and you will develop your own artistic um style you know i love to see that i'm seeing that with some of my patrons now um, but anyway you see how i've added the greens i've used a lot of the strategies i talked about in that other video of how colors get more neutral as they recede in the distance um but anyway i i really i've ended up talking for most of, most of the whole video here um also too this painting is going to be available in my etsy shop i'm trying to get it to where when i finish a painting I'll have it available in my Etsy shop. You know, that's the kind of the goal of artists too, is to sell your work. So I'll have the link to this painting in the about section of this video. I'll try to put it right at the top. And thank you to those of you who have purchased on my Etsy shop. It's still fairly new. I mean, just a few months old and, and I've been very blessed by having some sales and I'm very, very grateful uh, for that, especially in this crazy time with uh, COVID um, because my other business uh, had to do with the school system, so it really suffered. Um, but anyway, so uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this and um, leave some comments. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. I love to try to answer your questions. Also, add some work to the new Monet Cafe Google album. You don't have to be a patron. You don't have to be in the Facebook group. It's an album for anybody who visits this YouTube channel that you can put your work in there. Now, oh, I'm spraying some fixative here. I wanted to darken the foreground. I usually don't spray fixative at the end of a painting. I know I'm talking a mile a minute. I'm sorry, guys. Um, I usually don't spray it at the end of the painting because it does just that. It darkens your whole painting. And I usually never spray it, spray it in the background. I want to keep it lighter values in the distance. But occasionally I will use it to darken strategic areas or to get a little bit more layering. Now, another exciting thing coming. I've got a grand reveal of a product. Uh, I can't blow it too much. I'm working with the, um, the inventor and the owner of this company. That is a really neat way to uh, protect our pastel work. I'll just leave it at that. So here is the final with some rich blues and oranges and just full of color. I love Marsh scenes. And once again, available in my Etsy shop for purchase. All right, guys, I enjoyed being with you again. Happy painting. Come back soon.